What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to talk about a recent news, a recent rumor story that's been going around that there could be another Final Fantasy title that is exclusive to the PS5, and that'll be announced at E3 2021. So, uh, Final Fantasy never seems to stop. Um, I've talked about Final Fantasy before, and we'll give a, a quick rundown, you know, as the video goes on, where I stand with it. But I think this is uh, probably pretty true. We'll go over the source. This person has been right loads and loads of times in the past, so I think it's just a matter of us waiting for it and uh, kind of debating what it'll be, okay? So if you guys are new here, you haven't already, make sure, as always, you guys are subscribed. Bell icon turn on. Give this video a like. Definitely helps out uh, YouTube spread the video out more, and we're just going to jump right in. Okay, so this comes from Navtra. She's been very accurate in the past, calling several things, uh, which we'll, we'll go over as this uh, this Reddit post goes on. But basically, she says, I believe we're getting two major uh, SE reveals this June. Uh, one is an exclusive PS5 Final Fantasy title, and the other is a cross-generation Eidos title. And then they, they keep going, also, just to set expectations, it's something new. Not as high-end as 16 or first spoken, but certainly more uh, significant than World of Final Fantasy or a remaster. Conceptually, I think it might be up many people's alleys. And then another link that says that it's an RPG. And uh, again, Navtra has said in the past that the next God of War game will not be a cross-gen game. I pray to God that's true. And that Horizon Forbidden West was initially a PS4 game. That very much seems like it's true. She also claims that Miles and Sackboy will be cross-gen games. I guess it's not necessarily that hard to predict that things. But, I mean, look, you could, like I just did, you could nitpick each of those things that she technically got right. You could say, well, they weren't all that difficult to predict. Yeah, that's true. But I do recognize this user as well. She is, I would say, pretty darn reliable so and I, and I don't um I don't doubt the idea that Sony would just try to get as many fi at this point why isn't Final Fantasy just PlayStation exclusive in the first place which I mean I, I'm not opposed to you getting mad at that if people are mad about Sony getting exclusives if people are mad about micro just remember if you're mad at Sony for getting exclusives, you better be mad at Microsoft. Don't kind of pick and choose. That'd be pretty hypo uh, hypocritical. I'm not going to tell you what to think, but I've, I'm just throwing that out there into the universe and seeing what uh, seeing what it gives back. No, I mean, uh, I loved Final Fantasy VII Remake. So that's that. My, my history of Final Fantasy is actually pretty short. I played 15, I played VII's Remake, and that's pretty much it. I watched my sister play the Lightning Trilogy, um, but I never actually played them, and that's it. I never played the original Final Fantasy VII, so I'm definitely a new fan to the franchise. I mean, I've been a fan of Tetsuya Nomura for a very long time because of Kingdom Hearts. That I've played ever since the beginning, ever since I was first able to play games. But uh, for Final Fantasy, I'm, I'm a late a late bloomer. And, um, I, you know, the more the merrier. Here's what I'll say, though. Final Fantasy, much like any... Although... Because it's Nomura, and, and although he's kind of like an executive guy now, I don't know how much he's actually going to have like his fingers in everything, right? He's kind of like a, an overseer, which is probably better for his uh, where, where he where he's at. But much like any franchise, you know, having like 30 games coming out in the franchise like all at once probably isn't a smart idea. So while I would comically say. And in a way, I do believe this. Like, I don't really mind if there's more, you know, keep announcing them. Keep announcing them, keep releasing them. As long as they're high quality, they're fine. At the same time, y you do have to know, I would say, when to uh, to put on the brakes. But a, a PS, now, what's important, PS5 exclusive, so it's not a cross-gen. And that's made even more apparent because she goes on to then say about that cross-gen uh, Eidos. Or I, I don't need, is it Eidos or is it Eidos? I think it's Eidos. But that one is a cross-gen game, so I think she was very specific in saying, you know, Final Fantasy would be a, a PS5 game. So I don't think that 7 Part 2, although she doesn't say that that's what it's not, so I guess it could be, but, you know, 7 Part 2, it's not Final Fantasy 16, it's something else. I mean, they did announce, like, the mobile game and all the, actually, didn't they announce, like, two mobile games? I mean, they've gone, again, a, a little bit crazy uh, ever since 7's remake, but so far, the bar has been very, very high. Like I said, I love 7, and, uh, oh, I, I, uh, like, non-jokingly, but kind of jokingly, the more, the merrier. So, you know, this goes into what we've talked about with you know, because I've predicted, do, do they announce Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two? In fact, some people have said, Jeff Grubb included, have said it would kind of be weird if they didn't. So he kind of thinks that they, they will at least say, like, the title and say, like, this is what's uh, what's happening. So, But I've also said, you know, do you do these things without Sony there? So, like, so PlayStation's not going to E3. So if you have companies that are doing PlayStation exclusives in, in um, one way or the other, 
would they say something? Would they announce something at E3 at their own thing, even though Sony's not there? The answer is yes. The answer is that's actually happened before. It may seem weird, and to me, it's actually extremely weird, but it has happened. And I think that it's just something that uh, that you can do, right? Um, so I, I would look out for it. So I'm excited. To be flat out honest with you, it seems like Square Enix is probably going to have the best show. I know Microsoft will have Halo Infinite and all of the Bethesda stuff, but in reality, Square Enix could really blow them away depending on what they do, okay? And then everybody else really just hasn't talked much about what they're doing. Ubisoft, uh, you know, obviously they've set a date and time, but E3 is coming up, guys, just in a few weeks. Uh, we're going to be covering it on the channel. So really quickly, to end this video, again, make sure you guys are subscribed because I've covered E3 a ton over the last month. I'm going to be covering it a ton during E3. We'll be live streaming it. We'll be making loads, more videos than ever before on E3. And one final thing, uh, I, I, I started doing this last week. We are going to be live live streaming today so if you guys want to come back in just a few hours 3 p.m pacific time 6 p.m eastern time we're gonna be live streaming on this channel for a face reveal so if you guys ever wondered what i look like uh, we're finally gonna do it because we have 50k so thank you so much for the support can't wait for square enix's show can't wait for all of the e3 stuff to be honest with you and i hope to see you all on the next video